Hello, hello, Fernando. We are live right now. Thank you for being with me. <laughs> I am so happy to be here. <laughs> welcome, <Nice>. to <laughs> welcome to Jewel Media Live interview podcast program. Uh, I apologize. We're a little bit late today. We have some tech problems. And my name is Ching Ju. Today, my guest is Fernando Altero, who is a two time Grammy winning Argentina composer, pianist, and vocalist based in New York City. Thank you. <laughs> for being with me. How are you? Thank you. I'm very well. It's very nice to hear you talking nicely, highly about me. <laughs> of course, nicely. <laughs> Long time no see. I was looking at our old, uh, you know, record. Uh, we had a conversation like this. It was almost three years ago. It's almost three years. It's amazing. Yes. Like If we continue talking every three years, uh, let's say in 90 years, we're going to have, let's say, 30 conversations. Or so. uh, we have to make sure that we're going to be alive almost 100 years more. I know, I know. So tell me about it. What's new? I haven't seen you, you know, almost in three years. And what are the crazy things happen other than COVID is, you know, kind of invading all our lives? And what's going on in your life? You're right. Uh, it's been a long time and many things happened. And the COVID was a kind of a strange period in our lives. And it's kind of that I have forgotten everything. I don't know what's actually new at this point because everything was you know, so, so strange. Uh, I used to play a lot live. Uh, suddenly I was at home uh, working. Uh, taking care of my dog. Uh, now I don't have a dog, so it's, <laughs> I don't. I, I only take care of myself once in a while. <laughs> uh, uh, but many many things happened, and definitely uh, my life and I think our lives changed uh, so much mm -hmm. that it's uh, uh, when I, I see back and and I try to remember what happened and what have I done. I, I did a lot of things at home. I wrote a lot of music. I recorded a lot of music, but I haven't been playing live, which was uh, one of my main activities. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So um, so you, uh, you are a pianist, you're a composer, you're also a vocalist. So Tell us the most recent, uh, what is your next project if you are working on anything new? Well, as a composer, I just finished a concerto for piano and orchestra. And I was working on arrangements for piano and orchestra as well that I'm going to be performing soon in many places. Um, so I've, I've been writing a lot and recording. I've been recording also songs uh, that I wrote during the pandemic and I've been recording them. So I'm going to be coming out with a new album in two weeks. Wow. That's wonderful. So tell me a little bit about your background and you were born in Argentina. Yes. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your upbringing as a, as a music uh, musician, as a, as a kid learning music. Well, I, I was born to, my parents were musicians, both. And my grandmother was a, an opera singer as well. And music was everywhere. There was a lot of instruments, people playing, uh, people coming to our, our place. And I would play the piano even as a child when I just started and sing. So I never made a choice regarding being a musician or not. It just happened. I, I actually, I don't recall uh, thinking differently about what I would do in my life. Uh, so I, I didn't have a choice. <laughs> uh, so, uh, that made my, my process much easier. You know, I, I didn't have to make a decision about becoming a musician. I have always been a musician. And at the same time, I'm just nothing i'm just the guy that i i, I was born and uh, well i make music i didn't remember thinking about myself as a musician or not 
it, yeah. it was just what I, I was doing and I, I would do. Yeah, you're naturally, natural born. And also the yes. family, your family, yeah, history. So I, I didn't have any issues regarding what I'm going to do or, or, I don't know, going to a therapist, trying <laughs> to find my purpose in life. <laughs> So yeah. my my parents sa saved a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's funny. So are, also, you like a, are you like a very um when you first study piano are you very classical trained uh like uh, what kind of method did you guys study from like in China we our classical trained teachers are all from Russia. So it's a very much Russian uh style. And what about Argentina? Like, like, who are your teachers? Well, in my Argentina, it's a, like the state or Canada. It's it's a country made of immigrants, and only three percent of the population in Argentina is native population. Only three uh, percent. Everybody in Argentina came from Europe, basically. Mm -hmm. Not even from Asia, it's European population. Uh, Italians, there are 70%. Mm -hmm. Then Germans, British, French, and of course, Spaniards, where the, the, the colony was originally Spanish, but um, it was actually ruled by French, French mm -hmm. the French government. Strange, but it's, it's what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a strange mix of European cultures. And there's also a big Russian uh, community here mm -hmm. still. And in my case, I just had teachers, uh, Italian teachers, born in Italy, uh, both. And one was a woman when I was five, five, five year old. Uh, student, and then I had this Italian teacher who spoke only Italian, by the way, and I, I was uh, not even confused because I had no idea that she was <laughs> speaking Italian. I thought, well, it's just her way, uh -huh. and I remember that. And then I had another teacher, uh, a man who was also the conductor of the National Symphony in Buenos Aires. Uh, he was my mother's friend. So I, I, I was spoiled, by the way. You know, I was a very spoiled child. I, I, I could have all the instruments, teachers, and anything, re anything related to music uh -huh. was given to me instantly. So I could say, I want to have this bass, because I also wanted to play bass, electric bass, yeah. and, which I still play. I, I play the bass. And another instrument, I, if I wanted to have a synth, a synthesizer, I would have it. Mm -hmm. uh, if it was about music, my mother would say immediately, yes. Mm -hmm. Don't talk about anything. They're like, oh, I want a toy or I want to have a, a horse in my house or anything. No, no. Maybe I would hear that word, no. Mm -hmm. But when it was about music, she would say yes, immediately. Wow. So all my toys, and I, I used to, to spend a lot of time during my childhood in the bathroom uh, because the bathroom had a great sound. Echoey. The acoustics were great. And, and I uh, that I wanted to play the guitar as well. Mm -hmm. And the guitar was possible to play in the bathroom. <laughs> and of course, the piano was uh, impossible to, <laughs> to bring it, especially during um, at certain times of the day, you know, mm -hmm. like 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't really play the piano at 2 p.m. because uh, my my sister also played the piano. Oh, and it was she she was using the piano, nice. the the big piano we had in in the hall. So mm -hmm. uh, I would go to the bathroom and play guitar and sing and listen to Beatles songs. And I also I had a multi-track recorder, a, a, a very small one. So I used to overdub and make recordings in the yeah. bathroom. They yeah. sound terrible, horrible. <laughs> uh, but uh, it was 
my it, it was all about pleasure and yeah. and playing but playing no music playing as a child right. my playground was basically the bathroom and certain instruments i could play there that's awesome so would you like to play something for us right now you have a keyboard behind you how let, let's i have a keyboard how... let's yeah. see what happens i'm going to play a little yeah, yeah. thing very short and let's yeah. see okay, what let's happens see with this sound does. yeah we have some audience here and thank you mark and thank you miriam being with us and thank you people who are listening yes mm -hmm. good I can hear you. You can hear it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Now, nice. now it has been proven that I play the piano, so I was not, <laughs> not lying. Uh, that is nice. I, I don't know if the sound works well. The audio, with this the audio piano. is a little. Uh, the audio is not great through Streamyard. Yeah, the audio. It's because the I think the pitch, you know, the the frequency, uh, the high frequency sounds a little tinny, you know. It's because I, I think it's the the the, the stream yard audio situation. It's not you, you know. But anyway, yeah. Um, last I time, see. last time you had a pretty fancy setting. Remember, you had like yes. a couple of um, microphones. It was sounding a little better. Yes, and here it's uh, well, and this is an electric keyboard, oh. digital piano. Oh, okay. and last last time we had a. a Grand acoustic piano. Grand. Yeah. So um, now I'm checking on the headphones, but I don't hear it. Yeah. But basically, yeah, is what we have for today. <laughs> well, so uh, tell us. Um, I I wanted to show a couple of uh, you know, you have a very handsome uh, website, and let's see, um, let's see your website and. Um, and you have some great videos on it. So tell us a little bit about um, that. So what is this? Let's see. Uh, hold on one second. Okay, so so tell us a little bit about this thing I'm gonna play, Tango Meets Jazz. Yes. That was premiered at Lincoln Center, New York City. Um, yeah. yeah, you're, you're gonna see a quintet performing compositions I wrote uh, like 10 years ago, basically. Mm. And it, we have a bandoneon there, mm. you know, the, this kind of weird accordion mm -hmm. that is uh, the tango sound. Mm. Yeah. And we have violin, cello, bass, and mm. piano. Uh-huh. And that video it's something that was used for a promo uh -huh. 
for, for the show. So it's, it's not going to be a complete piece. It's going to yeah. be just a, a few seconds and, okay. and me saying strange things to the audience. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's see. So let me see. That's beautiful. So, um, yeah, let's see. I'm gonna to exit this one. Yeah. So, um, do, so you play the piano. You can you play uh, that instrument, bandi, bandido. What do you call that? Which instrument you said? Uh, this thing. Um, oh, the ban bandoneon. Bandon yeah. Uh, well, I don't play the bandoneon. No. I, I learned how to play. Mm -hmm. I was interested in in writing, basically. Mm -hmm. So uh, right. writing for the bandoneon. Yeah. So uh, I, and I'm also very curious. Uh, I think instruments are like toys. And then, uh, so I, I love them. Very expensive sometimes. Very expensive toys when it comes to uh, the Stradivarius, for example. Yeah. Uh, I'm, but I, I learned. How to play bandoneon, but I I don't play bandoneon. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, and that became a very interesting instrument for me uh, when it comes to write music, uh, which sounds like the music from Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. And and it's a sound that I also like, uh, despite being born in Buenos Aires and hearing it all the time. Uh, I, I could have hated the mm -hmm. sound, but uh, but I don't. I, I like it. I, I think it's a very, a, a very, let's say, that the instrument gives me a lot of choices mm -hmm. in dynamics, and uh, it has a strength that is it's very useful to express certain emotions in music. And that's why I wanted to have a bandoneon player always in, the, well, for a few years, always in, in my groups. That's and also, I, I had a friend who played bandoneon, so it was also a, a very important reason to feature the instrument mm -hmm. in my bands. Yeah, I, I love the sound of it. Um, it's very distinctive sound, and also you associate with the tango, right? Associate with Argentina music. Uh, it, it's very, in a way, uh, it's kind of flexible, the rhythm, and also uh, the, the, it's just the timbre of that instrument is very unique. You know, you can play harmony. Uh, it's a, basically a keyboard instrument, right? Keyboard yes. with, 
you know, with the fan, you know, so it's a very interesting, interesting sound. Yeah. So talk about uh, composition. Um, so when you write music for piano or for any other instrument, like um, where are the inspiration, uh, inspiration come from? Do you, uh, do you have these thoughts in your head for a long time and then you sit down to write? Or do you sit down and then just came to you? Uh, how how the process of writing, you know, the one of those most uh, recent works? How did that work? Actually, both options you mentioned uh, work very well for me. The sometimes I just I, I walk every day, uh, ninety minutes in general. Wow! And that's part of my exercise and also a meditation. So I do it very early in the morning and I wake up and after drinking some water, I go out and walk. And in general, when I come back, I have a lot of ideas or needs, needs uh, of expression, certain things that I want to do. Or oh, sometimes it also happens that I hear something that is not necessarily classical music or or piano or bandonian music. It's just anything that mm -hmm. I hear and I say, oh, I would like to have something like that. I, I would like to create something like that. And when I'm talking about that, I'm not, it's, it's not about the style because it, it could be any style. It's more about the spirit and the energy that I hear. And then I said, oh, I would like to have a piece uh, with that kind of energy, of course, translated to what I can do, to what my possibilities are. And, and so that's part of the process, walking and thinking about something that I heard and then started like to write down in my mind um, what I'm going to do. Sometimes uh, the, th those ideas work very well and sometimes they don't. So, uh, sometimes I come back home with a list of things uh, that I, I am going to do, which in, in general I can can remember what uh, all those ideas. When I come back and then I write down, I always have a, a notebook. Uh, I also enjoy writing, uh, the handwriting, the old school writing with a pen and paper. So I write, write down the ideas or the concepts or, or anything, and then I start trying to translate them into music. Sometimes they, hap the, they happen to be what I really want to have, and then I start developing stuff. And then sometimes I fail. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, yes. Yeah. Or they sound terrible, horrible. They're, and I said, well, this is not going to work at all. <laughs> but there's always a second opportunity in life for those ideas, and they stay in the copybook and at some, the, in the notebook. And at some point, they might be reborn. Who knows? Two years after that, suddenly yeah. I found them. Or I remember, oh, that day that I had this idea, and then they're converted into new things. And and why I do that, I just don't know. It's like asking me, why, why are you making music? Why, do, do you make a decision to be a composer or to write music, or why do you write music? I just don't know. I just do it. Mm -hmm. And that's... In, in the, this process I'm talking about, I, I also sometimes I, I don't know, it, you know. I have an idea, for example, mm -hmm. and then I write it down, and I don't know what I'm gonna do. Was a function for that idea? I have no, no idea about that idea. <laughs> no idea about that idea. Uh, so, but I just have it, mm -hmm. and it goes to a, a folder, and they stay there. Sometimes they see the light, uh, sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so sometimes it's me who doesn't see the light. Uh, we have a 
guest and we have people watching us right now. Thank you guys for being with us. Uh, Miriam Romero uh, Saltero, she, uh, she said, I found out about your channel, my channel through uh, Fernando previously um, when you did his first interview. Do you, do you, do you remember? If I remember what? Oh, the do you interview. remember her? Uh, I guess, um, yeah, she remember you through I, my first interview with you. So yes, I, yes, I, I do do remember Miriam. Yes, of yeah. course. Welcome, 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 Miriam. So thank you guys for being with us. And um, yeah, so any um, yeah, Sean is here, Michael Yen is here, Mark is here, thank you. And uh, we have Sherry from New Zealand, the pianist, is here watching us. So so wonderful to have all of you. And and Lewis is 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 joining. So yeah, and um, so so tell us a little bit uh, more about uh, if you have any uh, if if you the latest recording you did, are there a theme for that particular album? And yeah, tell us some some you know stories about that. I started writing the pieces for that album, which also contains a few songs. So I wrote lyrics as well. Mm, while I was working on another project, the other project was very demanding in terms of energy. For me, it was very, uh, it, it, it was something that required a lot of concentration and being serious and committed. And at some point I started needing an outlet, like a parallel output, uh, a more relaxed output. Um, of course, no one is, is going to impose me what to do or not to do. So if I started working on a project that I felt a little bit constrained, it was just because of my choice. Uh, but it happened. It happened that I was writing for string quartets and orchestra and this piano concerto, and I felt that, well, there's a lot of culture here. And I need, at the same time, I started need, needing to relax a little bit. Uh, so I thought that creating a parallel project with songs, and I started singing the songs and recording them, was kind of refreshment for me. The result was that at some point uh, that became the main project for me, uh, just because I, I, out of pleasure. And when I finished what I was doing, the orchestra and the piano and orchestra, uh, I also wrote a piano rhapsody for another uh, the, the pianist, Nada, it's, it's her name, Nada, and it's her only name, Nada, Nada pian, pianist, Nada is the way she presents herself. Uh, she's an amazing, great artist, uh, born and living, in, and living in the States. And I was writing also, the, the music with was a big pleasure. I finished that, then I was working on this other project. So everything was about orchestra and string quartets and piano and let's say difficult music in a way, let's say. Uh, difficult music for me to write and to concentrate on and also to perform. And that's why I, as a refreshment, I started recording other stuff. Uh, I could have, have uh, I don't know, go to the beach, for example, or the swimming pool or something, but uh, no, I decided to, to make music as a, let's say, as a source of re refreshment and rest. Uh, and then I started accumulating pieces and, and at some point I had eight, eight pieces. So I said, I'm gonna work on them seriously. And well, uh, I became a serious guy again and finished them. I, Oh, I, I'm still, let's say, in the, the final strokes with, with all of them. It's, Fernando, it's Fernando, I can't see you very well. Can you, you can. Yeah, can you give yourself a little more light? 
is there any light oh maybe do you have a like a a phone or something has a light on it <laughs> yeah yeah that's better yeah yeah it's the other computer i'm oh okay. turning on the computer and now I'm yeah gonna yeah because yeah. yeah, you're pretty much in the dark yeah yeah i like being in the dark <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh now yeah. we're gonna have a white screen a video yeah. with a white okay. screen. yeah yeah that's better so tell us a little bit about your two-time grammy winner what was your winning uh which are the pieces you won the first uh grammy was for a classical album and it was mainly mainly violin and piano music it also had uh, chamber works, but, uh, but let's say 70% of, of the album was violin and piano. Mm -hmm. Music that I recorded uh, with Nick Danielson, the violin player. Great longtime friend and amazing violin player. And we recorded the album. We were touring and playing live a lot by then. I remember that we used to play uh, at some point three concerts in every week, you know, and we were touring. So uh, it, it, it was great. Recording the album it was something that we did in, in one session because we already knew what we had to do, what we had to play after playing so many times live. So it became only pleasure and enjoying. It was that kind of recording that, oh, we're, we're sounding great. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are very good. We would say a joke uh, uh -huh. uh, after each take and say, oh, this, we're this not is bad. pretty good. <laughs> you know, this is pretty good. Yeah. And the duo, we, we started... The, the duo actually was an accident, a very good one. Mm -hmm. We were performing in in Bordeaux, in France. Mm -hmm. We were touring in France and as a quartet. And I had uh, all, all the same repertoire that, that, that I had written previously, uh, let's say a couple of months before starting the tour. We rehearsed and we started touring. And I remember it, it was maybe the show number 11 or 12 in France and we were kind of exhausted because we were traveling every day waking up very early in the morning taking the flight or the train going to another city and playing and after one week playing absolutely every day mm -hmm. we were really tired I remember that and two of the guys the bandoneon player and the bass player didn't show up to the sound check. Mm. So we were all in Nick and me, and we started playing the pieces. Let's say, okay, we're gonna do the sound check anyway. Let's play. We were there. And we started playing and we said, hmm, this is interesting. So when I when we finished the tour and went back to New York, we I, I started writing pieces just for the duo, thinking about the duo. And in a couple of weeks, the duo was completely established and we started to play. And then we recorded a few, oh, only a few months after that. Mm. I remember that saying what kind of, there was not a decision or uh, the, we had a conversation. Oh, this is interesting. I remember we were in, the, in a hotel in Paris when we said, oh, yes, the duo is a great option. I remember we were, the, there was a, a cockroach walking on the wall. And we were looking at the cockroach and saying, interesting design, you know, because it has eight legs and it has a very interesting design. The roach was yeah. moving so harmoniously and wonderfully, you know, and I thought, what a great design mm -hmm. God made at some yeah. point. Yeah, uh, it was the, the roach is definitely a great creation. That was a conversation. So we were not talking specifically about the duo. We were talking about the roach, but at some point we said the sound check was great, 
you know, we have to to do something with this duo, this spontaneous duo. Uh, we still continue playing with quartet, quintet, and other stuff, but I I wrote the music, and that's how we recorded the album. And the rest, I had no idea about absolutely anything. Um, I was in uh, Miami visiting Do you have any audio? Do you have audio or video of the two of you? Oh yeah, yeah. The, 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 there's. Is it there's on the a... website or on? Oh YouTube? yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you send? Yeah. Why don't you send me a link? Right now? Yeah. So I can play for us. Oh yes, I will. Yeah, send me a link. You send me a link in the private chat. Mm. Unless okay. it's on your website, I can find it. Do you have it on your website? I do. You do? Yes. Oh, you have it on your website? Oh, then I can find it. So your website here. Oh, this is album. Oh, these are the, this is your website. Can you see right now? Uh, now I found the video. Okay. I'm sending. I'm sending you the Send, yeah okay. the link in the private yeah. chat. Yeah, private chat. Uh -huh. Cool. You got it. Okay. So that was it. Well, that was the first Grammy, but I had no idea about anything. I I didn't even I, I didn't send it myself. It was the, the company, which was oh. Harmonia Harmonia Mundi. Oh For yeah. That that particular album was Harmonia Mundi. I had recorded also with Nick. Uh, some duos as a part of a bigger album uh, for Warner Music a year ago, mm -hmm. a, a year before that. Yeah. And then we recorded this Vital, which was the, the album. Mm -hmm. uh, the company sent it to the Grammys. Uh, and suddenly I was in Miami, mm -hmm. I remember, and, and I got an email mm -hmm. telling me, congratulations. Mm -hmm. All right, a friend of mine, Pablo Aslan, a bass player mm. and composer and great friend of mine. And he sent me congratulations. And I see that, congratulations for what? What have I done now? <laughs> uh, so I, I found, oh, you're nominated for the, the Grammys. And wow. Oh, okay, here we wonderful, go. great. I had no idea still what, well, and now what I, do I have to do anything? Will I do anything? No.
Wow. Muchas Amazing. gracias. Amazing. That was amazing. Thank you. Yeah, so I have a question. Um, looks like you memorized the whole piece and he's reading the music. So how does that work? Like it's your composition. And yes. It, it's, it sounded very, you know, rhythm, rhythmically challenged and also articulation is, you know, very, um, very vivid. So how, how does that work? Like it's all in your head. You don't even see your notes or is it improv? Uh, well, that piece, uh, I mean, know what I'm going to play. It, uh, I also improvise in, in the concerts. Uh -huh. the, in that particular piece, there's no improvisation. Uh -huh. it's, uh, it's like a classical short piece. Uh -huh. and, and it had a purpose at some point. It was a choreography that never happened, but uh, uh, I remember writing it for uh, think, thinking about uh, dancers, uh, not tango dancers. Uh -huh. uh, that would be well fast. Uh, the rhythm is a milonga, is what uh -huh. it's called, milonga. Uh, although it has certain, it's a, it's a milonga with some. What is it? What is the meter like? What is the meter like? It's like a one, two, three, four, or one, two. Is it a mixed meter? Oh, no, no, no. That was uh, all four. And then four? Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm in for it. Um, but I don't really use uh, odd meters in general. Uh -huh. Sometimes I have very little things. It's not something that I find very pleasant to play for me. Uh -huh. um, I enjoy that when other people do it. Yeah. Uh, especially Middle Eastern music. Uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, oh, Arbin by the Arbin way. By the yes. way, my friend Shark Finn says uh, La Go something. What does that mean? The Roach. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's funny. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Shark Friends, you're so funny. Anyway. Uh, I'm not sure if they're talking about the Roach I was talking about uh, minutes ago, or he's talking about the, the piece that he found uh, that the piece sounded like La Cucaracha, which is, which is a Mexican piece very very famous you, you know la cucaracha no you don't? i don't know no you don't know la yes of course you do if you hear it i uh, play la cucaracha oh. oh okay yeah yes you know yes yeah. yes yes i do <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Wow, that piece was good. The the violin piece, you know. Maybe when when we meet sometimes in the near future, I would like to play with you. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, yeah. I, we will have to meet in the near future. <laughs> I we, know. We, we, unless we can meet in the past, <laughs> you know, with this. For, for that, I'm gonna meet in the past. <laughs> With this, we oh, yeah. can meet in the past. <laughs> no, actually, no, no, no. Yes, we will meet in the near future. You're right. Yeah. But yeah, yes, I, I have. A, I also have viola parts. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. For, for I, I'm, I'm talking about that piece and some others that oh, are yeah. very. That I, I I have the the program for viola and piano as well. Oh yeah. So yeah. what is the so. Tell me a little bit that the I actually have no idea how do people get nominated, you know, by Grammy? And is it like a, uh, if I have a recording, can I nominate myself? <laughs> uh, I? No, no, definitely no, you can't. <laughs> uh, you can submit the the album, uh huh. And then, uh, there's uh, I, I don't know, judges there and pre-selection, selection. At some point, they announce the, the nominees. And, yeah. yeah. So which, uh, I have not seen that. I only saw the congratulations from Pablo. <laughs> and then I said, well, what, what do I have to do? I, it was something completely new for me. 
Do you uh, win? Did you know. win money? Or if uh, someone, no. do they win money? No, no, no. Prestigious. Uh, and uh, let's say the Grammy as well. And mm -hmm. it was a great moment. It was a, uh, it's a great memory. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, no, no, it's not about money. Yeah. So, w which one is the other piece you were twice nominated? And the other album is a uh, it's a tango album. Oh, yeah. Strange tango, experimental, strange oh, yeah. tango album. Oh, yeah. And it was tango just because uh, we had to put a label, and in, uh, and it's necessary to put a label. And what I did in that case was uh, not writing the compositions, writing arrangements for uh, many traditional tango pieces written in the 1920s. Mm. And very, very old tangos, let's say. Mm. Uh, and it also happened because I, I was playing with a friend. We were just playing and going through music, and suddenly we started playing like very, very old tangos, like joking, you know? Uh, and suddenly I said, oh, I like that. It's interesting. It's a great source for me, uh, for doing something different mm -hmm. and i'm going to be repeating myself again which is doing something different mm -hmm. that's the way i repeat myself all the time mm -hmm. trying to find something different to do because i i don't know get bored myself you know mm -hmm. i don't want to see myself again doing the same thing mm -hmm. um and then i said oh i'm gonna do i'm, I'm gonna make an album with uh, those old very old pieces written in the 20s and 30s a, mm -hmm. a couple of them as well um, so i started arranging arranging them and also recording vocals and i invited a lot of singers uh, not only musicians that prefer instrumentalists also singers at some point um, since the credits it's something of the past because the the album now that's changing and we are starting to be able to see the credits mm. online. Mm. But 10 years ago or seven, it was impossible to see composers who played, who sings, mm -hmm. unless unless they had the feature, feature some featuring someone. So it was very hard to see who's singing. At some point, it, it was hard for people to, to tell who's, who was singing, or even if it was me. And in, in fact, it happened that sometimes, oh, you sing with a very high voice in that piece. No, it's not me. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's not me singing with a, that high pitched voice. It's a, it's actually a woman, and so <laughs> I, I, it was not me. So it was a little confusing at at some point. That was uh, funny for me. Um, so we had you, a great time. Did you had a um, vocal training? Like yes, you, yeah. So. So, um, you, you, would you like to like sing for us a little bit? No, no, uh, <laughs> no, definitely no. No, I heard the audio and it is no, so I, I will not do enough. that. No, 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 oh, even even the videos they sound, mm, I don't know, mm. now the, the so I, I'm not sure. The, for people who are gonna be even a first impression, uh, I want to, um. I want to do it in a different kind of audio. I'm sorry, no. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. The stream yard, uh, the bandwidth is too small. That's why the audio sound is a little small, tinted, you know? So there's no echo. Absolutely. So, and, and I can hear, I, I, I have to really pay attention and be careful of what you're saying, and even with the headphones. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I don't know if you're saying yeah. something nice to me or exactly the opposite. <laughs> So yeah, so tell tell me a little bit like um, you all your life you, in your life you're a musician you stumble onto study music not that you had too much other choices now looking back if you had another life uh, what possibly other professional you think you yourself might also be very good at that well thinking about being very good uh 
<laughs> I don't know if it's maybe if I you know, I give I commit myself with the same passion um, I did with music because I, I didn't make any efforts in in my life regarding music. I'm talking mm -hmm. about it, it was something that just came with pleasure and it was not, not about effort. There was hard work at some point and practice and as I said, commitment, but not something that it's uh, an emotional um, requirement like uh, an effort. Mm. It was not demanding mm. to me in that sense. Uh, so what I would do, seriously, uh, I, I, well, I don't know. Um, for example, I'm, I'm also a yoga teacher. You are? Yeah, I, I, I don't teach. Show me some posts. <laughs> yes, of course. I can do it right now. Yeah. For example, no, yes, yeah, but but it's true. I'm a yogi, but not a yoga teacher, and also I, I'm a yogi, yoga practitioner, oh. uh, which is called a yogi. Yogi. Let's say I am. I, I hate to say I am a teacher, and I, I, but it, well, I don't know how to say that. I have to think about that because in, in general, it's not something that I really speak. And mm -hmm. it's very interesting your question, mm -hmm. and. But I, I, I don't do it uh, professionally. It's not what I do mm -hmm. every day. Sometimes I do it, but I, I became just because I wanted to deepen into the practice and, and become a yogi in my, as a lifestyle as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe I will do something like that. Um, and I, yes, I, I think that it could have been an option um, I also like uh, finances. I like the Wall Street. Oh yeah, you world. do. Yeah, oh, yeah. You something do. Like that. You should talk to Shaq Fin. Yeah. Shaq Fin, our audience. He's a finance person. He's... Perfect. I need some advice. Yes, Shaq Fin. No, no. Well, <laughs> but uh, in fact, it's something that uh, I like. I enjoy. I have no idea why. Yeah. No idea. Uh, and it's uh, it's 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 so something interesting. Talking. I like the. You yeah. have too much money. You don't know what to do with them. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm talking about things that I, that I like. It's not necessarily something that I do. I, uh, as I'm telling you, well, in the case of yoga, I practice every day. It's a, it's a practice. It's mm -hmm. a lifestyle. It's, mm -hmm. uh, right. And and I maybe I I would do that, you know, and. Opening the institute, the school, something like that. And uh, that's maybe something yeah. I would have done. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I, I would love to. I would love to play your work uh, with you. You know, when 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 next time we we get together in New York. So, um, uh, we are. We started late. I have a actually someone is coming to my apartment. Uh, I may hear a buzz. Okay. What? very loud so then uh, i have to go buzz my friend in now um do you have anything you want to promote anything you want people to know your upcoming uh album or uh you know stuff you've done in the past tell us about your um accomplishments or stuff you want people to know what an interesting question um promote i i i don't really have anything to promote i can talk about uh, the, the new album, which is a collection of songs that is coming out in two weeks. And the name of the album is Ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> yes. And and it's all, it's it's songs. I wrote the lyrics first, and then I started writing the, the music and singing them. And mm -hmm. it's all about the inner dialogue we all have mm -hmm. talking with ourselves it's not talking about anyone or to anyone mm -hmm. uh, it's all reflections about how we treat how i treat myself mm -hmm. when i speak to me every day hmm. so in all different situations many many different situations so it's all about um treating ourselves with love yeah 
which sometimes uh, I don't. Yeah, maybe sometimes I become too harsh uh, with expectations about myself, about what. So that's uh, that's the album. It's about it's uh, the inner dialogue. It, who is singing? Is it for for you or for female voice? No, no, just me. Oh, so you sang in the album. I'm singing and playing a few oh, instruments. Awesome, awesome. And I have a string quartet and strings orchestra, which mm. is from Venezuela. It's a great orchestra and string quartet called the VSERE, Venezuelan Strings Recording Ensemble, conducted mm. by Raniero Palm. And great players, fantastic players. And, and the rest of the instruments I play. And I'm, in the very last part of the album, th good things happened, and I had the fortune of uh, counting with uh, another, uh, well, a few more friends performing. Mm -hmm. Christine Brebs on violin, Adam Tully guitar, mm -hmm. Julian Armida guitar, and Leonardo, Leandro Raguzza on bandoneon. Where can people find your album? Is it like where it's going to be published? Nowhere. Now it's gonna be it's gonna be possible to find once it's released in all platforms. Oh, but oh. Uh, that that's gonna be in two weeks, a little bit more. On uh, streaming, streaming. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be oh. everywhere. Oh, you're gonna you you, oh. you will go to your bathroom, and when you open the door, you're gonna see my album. <laughs> it's gonna be everywhere. <laughs> I'm not gonna give you so more scared. details. <laughs> I say, whoops, that's Fernando, that's Fernando, that's Fernando. Yeah. Everywhere. Hey, by because, the way, you know what? You just, you you kind of, um, um, I have so many people in the audience, right? Many, many friends I made in the last two years is through Clubhouse. Have you, have you, do you know what is Clubhouse? Clubhouse? No, I don't. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah, so many people do not know what Clubhouse is. So I'll talk to you privately. Clubhouse mm -hmm. is an audio, it's an audio app where you go on Clubhouse and you meet people. And I think it would be nice for you to go to Clubhouse. And so, so like I met uh, um, Tech for Your Needs, that's Lewis on Clubhouse. I met, I don't know if I met Miriam. Uh, I met Miriam before Clubhouse. I, I met Shark Finn, Mike Sherry, the pianist from New Zealand on Clubhouse. It's a really wonderful thing. You should join. Yeah. Clubhouse. It's, a, it's a great. social media. It's only audio. So people play music to each other. You can have your own room, you know, Fernando's room. You can perform your music. You can tell your music to people. And then you, I have 6,700 fans on Clubhouse. Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. You have you, your own room. I have my own room. I teach people how to use smartphone to shoot film because I made a documentary by using smartphone, you know, iPhone. So I have a room consistently. Uh, it's called club. Now it's called house, whatever. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a room I created. And I, every Friday, 12 PM Eastern time, um, we, we talk about smartphone film making. And I've been consistent for 115 weeks, never stopped. Can you believe that? Wow. 115 weeks, Fernando. So <laughs> that's a lot. And you're talking about a smartphone. I have a very smartphone, much smarter than me. And <laughs> and, and and it's here, so I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready anytime. Yeah, come join us. Maybe, maybe you can join us on Friday. You can join us anywhere in the world. So I met so many wonderful people, met so many filmmakers, m met so many musicians all over the world. Yeah, it's really wonderful. My clubhouse is yeah. not paying me to say that. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I well, think you'll be great. Yeah, you'll be great. Yeah, and it's a good way to be on social media as well. It's kind of social media. It is a, a type of social media, but it's much more intimate because you know people by voices. So imagine, oh, you know, imagine you you meet people on on Facebook. Of course, it's very image and writing, right? And you meet people on Instagram, which is also image, and you can talk to. But um, um, Clubhouse is is all voice. 
I tell you, mm. voice is very, very, how do you say? Uh, what's the word? Voice can be very intimate and very personalized. I mean, it's very difficult to fake somebody's voice, you know? I mean, unless you're a really great voiceover actor, you know? But yeah, so it's a very good app. Yeah, I hope it doesn't, it develops continuously. You know, it's only two years old. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Well, so more things. I, yeah, I look forward to, to your new album. And uh, yeah, so... Uh, let me do a very quick. Um, do you, I don't remember when you were with me almost three years ago? Did mm -hmm. I do a rapid fire with you? Rapid fire means I ask a question very quick and you answer very quick. It's like right. a very, it's kind of, it's like a game, it's a war game. Oh, Have I done it with you? I don't think we did it. I'm scared. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> Because you were really one of the very early people were on my program, 2020, August. That was a long time ago. Yeah, almost three years ago. So let's do a rapid fire. And then and, and I think uh, somebody will buzz my door very quickly. <laughs> so, All right. Yeah. So anything uh, I wanted to thank you for being here with us and, you know, share your music, your talent and. I want our audience to also check out my new film. Uh, it's not new. It's it's two years old. My Young and Diary. Now it's on Amazon Prime. So that's excellent. My, Congratulations. That's yeah. I watched yeah. your film a long time ago. I remember, like to, I, at least two years ago. I, I but I did because you sent me a link and I yeah. watched. But I'm gonna watch it again. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So rapid fire. Ready? Rapid fire. Yes, okay. I'm good. Right. Favorite color. What? Favorite color? Purple. <laughs> what is your favorite Argentinian food? Dishes? Food. Ar Argentinian food dishes. Wow. The, the, the rapid fire. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let's say one. It, it's uh, it's something called umita, and it's made with corn. Oh uh, yeah, corn. Uh, yes. Mm. What is your favorite film genre? Film genre, mm. um, comedy. Mm. Any favorite TV show currently you watch? I don't have a TV set. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> it's 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 true. I I, I I don't. It's true. I'm I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I'm not saying oh no the TV oh no 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 no. I just don't don't have it. Um, it's a sign of intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, but it, it's not something that deliberated. It just happened. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's very funny. Um. Yeah. So, any book you read recently you would recommend us to read? Uh. Yes, I read, but it's a. <laughs> it's a. It's about the Buddha, the Siddhartha Gautama. It's called the Twin Verses. It's about the, what? Twin, twin verses, the Buddha, oh. the Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha, the original Buddha of Buddhism, the mm -hmm. Indian. Right? Oh. I read it. Not, not not related to yoga, because in fact, there are separate things. Uh -huh. um, but I, I read it, the the twin, it's, it's called the twin verses. Twin verses. And it's, uh, it's quite long mm -hmm. and interesting. And well, I'm not going to talk about the book. But I'm going to suggest you to read and have a great time. Mm, okay, good to know. Um, uh, Shark Fin has a question for you. It might not be a um, rapid fire thing. Did you uh, I can see the, the question. Now. Oh, no, I can see. Yes. <laughs> question for Fernando. That's me. Does he tune his piano to a non standard key? Uh, no, actually. I, it seems to produce somehow somewhat unique achromatic sound. I'm sure it does. Yeah, no, but um, no, I don't. Uh, I don't do that. I played once piano in France. I remember that it was completely out of tune in a way that it was interesting to play it because it was so weird and strange. Um, it was part of the decoration in the house. So it was completely out of tune, but in a way that it's impossible to be so out of tune as it was. 
And I remember that he started playing, and it was a complete universe of sounds, definitely. And <laughs> something unbelievable. I started playing it. I couldn't believe the sounds that were coming out of, of this upright piano. It was a very small one. And yes, uh, so, so I understand what you say. And thank you very much for the question. It's a great thing. And a great <laughs> suggestion as well. I will do that because uh, uh, my neighbors are going to enjoy that. <laughs> yeah. So how many hours do you practice still on your piano every day? The practice, uh, I just sit down and play and practice is a word that I I think I left in the closet upstairs. Uh, practice, practice. No, no yes, uh, yes, I, I practice, but I, I was not feeling like practicing. Um, I was more just sitting Hello. down and... I'm playing stuff directly. I used to practice. And what, what do I call practice? I call when I, I do a warm up extension. I start with extension. Yeah. And then I, I, I call the gods, all the gods. And then I stay there and I breathe. <laughs> and suddenly I start grow, growing hair everywhere. <laughs> and, and, and at some point, I say, okay, that's, that's good. After the extension exercises, uh, you know, a few yeah. minutes, like, like doing that with all the keys and then scales and chords. And I, and I love doing that. that. That's what I call practice. Yeah. And I haven't been doing that for maybe a couple of months, no more than that. Once in a while, I, because I also enjoy doing that. Right. Right. Practicing is so, such a tedious work. And I, I haven't practiced much myself, so I'm guilty. Yeah. So, yeah. And um, so any, I know you walk. Um, any uh, tips on making yourself young and beautiful? <laughs> um, yes. Uh, you, you can get the Photoshop, uh, which is uh, Adobe Photoshop. <laughs> and then you, you're going to become young and beautiful. And now you have a lot of filters included in the Instagram. I'm very new with uh, Instagram and somehow with Facebook as well. You know, I really started publishing stuff uh, two years ago. Really publishing. Well, uh, so, uh, no, what, what I like to do, I, I like the yoga practice. Uh, I think uh, the way we eat is very important. The way I eat makes a big difference for me in how I feel. Mm -hmm. and how I, uh, how happy and cheerful I can be and drinking a lot of water, doing breathing exercises. Um, that's, that's what I do. Uh, the food is very important for me in that sense. I mean, uh, eating a vegetarian diet works very well for me. Are you a vegetarian? Yeah, it, it happened by accident. But let's say I, I went to a place a few times. I went to play concerts to a yoga center mm. a few times. And it's uh, in the mountains, in the Catskills, upstate New York. So it's like here, going to the north. And and I, I felt so well that I could not recognize myself. You know, I, felt, I, I was not used to feel as well as I was feeling there. I remember after three days of staying in the monastery, well, I, I, the ashram is actually the translation. I was feeling so well. And I said, what's going on with me? What's going on? What? Going on? I'm not used. What's wrong I, with I, me? I, I, I was becoming a good person. <laughs> I don't know what was happening to me, but all my thoughts were angels and everything was fine everything had a solution mm. everything had, was not even a problem to find no a solution matter. for no I matter started, wow i feel so well and then yeah. i would come back to the cd yeah. i'm talking about 20 years ago yeah. and let's say um, that i i was by accident starting to feel that well-being that I was not, I didn't know the source, where the source was. Mm -hmm. I was feeling like I, I had, I don't know, 20 years or not even 20 again. 
Mm, mm. Well, we need to talk. Let me know that place. <laughs> I need to go. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of places. Yeah. Everywhere. <laughs> and and then I went back to to the city to Williamsburg in Brooklyn where I live, and then I said, mm, okay, well, slowly I was going to be that guy that I already know and I work for, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. saw him in the mirror in the bathroom once, and I said, I work for you, and I'm suffering because of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to myself and I said, where is that well-being coming from? Mm -hmm. Okay. And after a few weeks, I went again to that same place because I played another concert. Mm. Uh, a solo concert was that time uh, because I had played with, uh, with someone else, with the guitar player. We played the duo. Mm. And I was playing solo. And again, I felt the same thing. I was feeling so well. The food was essential. Of course, I was doing exercise. The environment was important. But it was incredible how well I was feeling and my thoughts were so sort of clear and I said, what's going on? Yes, it's very simple. It's what's mm. going on. Mm. And the third time that happened, then I decided, I'm gonna stay there, not, not in the place only. I'm I'm talking about I, I'm gonna practice this vegetarianism and, and other things as well, meditation mm -hmm. and and other practices, of course, the postures. Mm. And that's how I felt that I, the yoga was something I wanted to do on a daily basis and, and also as a, as a center mm. in, in my life to become the core of my mm. activities. Right. And I already had experience with yoga. I had been doing yoga and going to classes and my mother, taught me uh, postures and pranayama, the breathing exercises, when I was yeah. a kid. Yeah. And so that was uh, when I was 20-something. Uh -huh. Yeah. That I, I was there in the ashram. And I said, OK, uh, I'm going to see. And it was not an effort. It was some, uh, or uh, like depriving myself of anything. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't feel that I had to do any more effort. I just found, I started to find a lack of interest in sodas, for example, mm -hmm. that I used to drink a lot of sodas and find the sodas the most important thing on, of, in the world, even more than music. Yeah. And, and suddenly I, well, I don't drink sodas. And I started like feeling that it was something that the normal, a common thing for me. Oh no! Yeah. I, and that happened, and that's that's how yeah. I started sleeping much better, breathing much better, uh, having much much more energy. Mm -hmm. That's great. Hey uh, Fernando, I have a I have a question before we end. Uh, I okay. guess the rest is coming soon. Um, I was in um, your country. Um, I think in 2013 we went. And then we spent one day to go to Uruguay. And then in Uruguay, everybody's smoking uh, this mate. And is this is only Uruguay thing, or also Argentinians also smoke mate? And why? Uh, the drinking with yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. With straw? Cool. Yeah. Uh, no, it's uh, South America. Oh, yeah. So is it, is it makes you feel good? It's like everybody's holding the thermal. And another thing, and like every people on the street of uh, Uruguay is drinking Malta. Like yeah, especially in Uruguay, that it's true what you say, especially in Uruguay, they, they're very famous for that, for using, for, for drinking Malta while walking on the street yeah. and carrying the thermal. <laughs> That's very, when, when, when you see someone, uh, for example, in Buenos Aires, I remember when I was a kid and you see someone carrying the thermal and drinking Malta in the street, they said, oh, that's a Uruguayan guy. Oh. Uh, that that would be okay. almost a joke, but it wasn't because, in fact, they were. And still, Uruguayans and Argenti Argentine people are the same. I, I, there's ab absolutely no differences mm. at all. Mm. No differences. So, uh, it's impossible so to that? tell. So mm -hmm. why is that drink is so popular? Is it like a calm them down? Or is it like a marijuana? Uh, no, 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 no. What no. is it? No, the effect 
if, uh, if it's not psychoactive at all and you're not going to drink that and start in seeing angels and <laughs> you know, you're not going to see things or hear things uh nothing is going to happen in that sense it, it's a it's a boost it's, a, it's very much like it contains caffeine by the way oh, okay but it's very good because, uh, one of the great effects it has is that it cleanses the liver oh so cleansing the liver means uh, letting go some anger and some other strange feelings that we all uh -huh. have, emotions that are very much, you know, located uh, in the liver I and ga gallbladder. Uh -huh. And it's a cleanse. It, it cleans immediately all the system. And that's very good. Uh -huh. um, oh. And if it, it becomes an addiction because of that well-being, of course, uh -huh. And also because it, it's an oral, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, I would say addiction, but it's a, it's like anything with mouth, like eating, yeah. smoking, yeah. cigarettes, yeah, uh, drinking it. It's all about anxiety. So yeah. there's a fine line in anxiety, well, well-being, and of course that well-being that becomes of that that the liver immediately gets clean mm, that's a good thing okay that's good to know so i uh someone will knock on my door very quickly and before we end would you like to uh end our session today by playing just a little bit something or or you feel would you feel comfortable to play a little bit yes your... of course i do okay. i do it okay. uh, even if the sound is, is what yeah, the sounds not great me. but we still can hear your essence of your playing destroyed my instruments like uh oh uh oh them. you have several of them <laughs> thank right. you so Wonderful. much yeah um thank yeah. you so much Let's, it was a great you know, pleasure we had a lot of fun thank you for all, all everyone the audience thank you for their patience and for being there thanks a lot thank you thank you so well i look forward to seeing you in person okay before 2023 ends okay absolutely we will <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank Take you so care. much. Take care. Take care.
Bye. Bye, bye. bye everybody. We're going to end the session.